Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to another Daily Scuttlebutt with Ivy's Family Factotum. So, actually, we're sitting here at the house. I'm still in the truck because I just got home from dropping off the kiddo at school. Me and Willow. Say hi, Willow. Willow, Willow. Willow, Willow. She probably looks a little bit different from the last couple times you've seen her because Mom gave her a haircut. Oh, Willow. Are we home? Can you say hi? <laughs> but, yeah, today is kind of yucky outside. So, looking at the weather, it it looks like we're going to be having some some scattered thunderstorms. Scattered thunderstorms. Haven't had enough coffee yet. <laughs> Uh, that was supposed to be coming through only on a Thursday, or it's, it was thunderstorms coming through on Thursday, and that was the, the last time that I checked the weather, and then I looked at it again last night, you know, just double check, and now it's calling for scattered thunderstorms today, thunderstorms tomorrow, going into half the day on Friday. So... Where I thought we were only going to be getting rain for roughly a day, if a, a full day, is now being spread across three days. And it really bums me out. It really does. Because I need to get some work done. <laughs> so, we we are pretty much done. What I still got to clean up the driveway on the, on the property. I'd still need to open up the, the area over by where the gate is because I need to be able to make a, a wider turn with the RV because it will not fit through the gate. So well, basically how the, the, the curve is to get into our driveway is not big enough to be able to pull the RV. It's, it's barely big enough to pull the 16 foot through there, which you can. Obviously, backing it in is is easier than pulling it straight through but for the rv i'm not going to be able to back it in i actually need to pull it in straight and then it's going to go basically in front of where the house used to be because i'm pulling into the basically the yard and then from the yard it gets backed past the pond and then over to where the rv pad is going to be that we've talked about uh, cause if I back in all the way, that's, I'm not going to be able to make that, the that turn right there next to the shop. So I need to be able to pull in and then back in towards the pond. Um, uh, yeah, still got quite a bit of cleaning to do up around the driveway though. Mainly all the trees that have been knocked down. I still got to do that. The video today, the video that's coming out today is in the blacksmith shop. That's what I talked about yesterday. So I do have a project coming out. I'm not going to talk about it. You're just going to have to go check it out. Um, it is a tool for me to be able to utilize on the property. I might need to reach out to someone, though, to help me with making a handle. Because... Well, for one, I, I've never made this style of handle before. And I know this other individual has. And it, it would it definitely would help. And I've been meaning to get over to his place for the longest. And uh, if if that if that works out, then I'll I'll let you guys know. But well I'm gonna i I'm gonna see how that goes because I wanna get the the tool done first basically ready to hang, and then it's going to need a handle. So, I will. <laughs> She's like, hey, we're home. Let me out. You just sitting pretty, waiting for daddy. <laughs> but our main focus is, so obviously, to, to live on the property, 
Okay, we're we need power. Yes, we need power. We're we're not doing the whole off grid thing, uh, especially with the little one, you know, being autistic and and uh, and such. It just our our life is hard enough as it is. We're not going to make it any harder. <laughs> so we need power because I mean we can run the RV off the generator. I know that, you know, in, in the time being, but run a generator is expensive, even though, I mean, we can, we can, we don't have to run the generator 24 seven because the refrigerator and stuff and, and the RV can run off of propane. You know, was, cause I have a, you know, battery and such and I can always get like a little solar panel for charging the battery and a lot of the lights in the trailer work off the battery and things like that I can even do like a dual battery because right now I only have one battery and it, obviously if I put two because the, there's enough room on the rack for four four batteries so obviously if I got more batteries I can always up the you know the the amperage up the life the duty cycle, basically. Because um, I can still wire all that in to still be 12 volts. You're just upping the amperage is all. So when you're hooking batteries in, in the series like that. Um, they, they just last longer. That's it. Now for the RV pad. So the area over like where we're putting the, the RV and the two cabins. So the one cabin has to go in, or at least at least the foundation. We have to have the foundation in place before we can get the electricity hooked up. So I have to put in a service pole. Basically, I have to do all those things, put it in place. And then as soon as we have the foundation for the cabin, it has to be at least 400 square feet or bigger and the electric company will come out they'll put in a transformer they'll run the wires they'll hook it up to our service pole for nothing it, it won't cost us anything to have the electricity put in um or hooked up i should say and then from there we'll be able to to do you know a little separate you know, RV pole or, or whatever, you know, I can always run off that and then obviously run in power to the cabin. We can do that, all that separate, right? So that's a, our biggest focus right now is getting the, the RV pad done. So we have a place to put the RV, getting the foundation done for the first cabin which is mom and dad's cabin because they're they're actually going to be moving to the property before my mom and grandma. Um, that that was always been the plan because they're they're ready. They just need a place. Okay. Um. <coughs> so getting that foundation put in place, and then getting the well service because even if we need to leave the well over where it's at, I want to get it checked out get it serviced because it does need repair the actual casing needs repair and then um i have my own pump if needed that you know i can always go over there and we can run that off of a generator to just fill in like the holding tanks and, and all that stuff in the rv you know because this is all stuff that we we can be doing until we get another well dug because i already know getting that is expensive and that's one of the things that, you know, I, I don't mind having to fill up the RV with fresh water every day. I don't mind having to go dump the sewage tanks because there is a septic on the property. I just don't know exactly where it's located because I know there's a pipe. So getting the septic located and such, I can always retrofit that to have a dump station right and then getting a separate you know dump tank because you they have like those little cart you know tanks that you can get 
to dump the sewage from the RV into that little holding tank, take the holding tank to where the septic is, because it was over by the, the shop and the other house that we took down. Dump it, right? And then I can continue to do that because the RV where we're putting the RV is not staying there long term. So, you know, going through and, and doing all stuff, obviously the, the cabins that are over there are going to need some type of sewage. Um, obviously, we can always do, you know, like the, the composting type toilets or you know, kind of do like what Doug and Stacy does, you know, a box with a, a bucket in there and you just cover it with sawdust and then take that out to a composting bin. Could always do something like that, but, you know, I don't mind doing something like that, but the cabin is not for me. The cabin is for mom and dad. You know, they probably don't want to do that. They don't want to have to do that every day. So that that's one of those things that, you know, I'm still trying to give them because they, they have electricity, they have running water, they have sewage, they, they have all that stuff where they're at now, you know, so having them go back to, to basics, <laughs> you know, of basically, I mean, if they want to do that, they just go back to Mexico, right? So... They don't want to do that. Uh, I, I'm sure dad wouldn't mind, but I know mom doesn't want to do that. So we're going to get them an actual flushable toilet. You know, we're going to look into getting, because I, I know a, an area. So what I'm thinking about of where we can put the tank, it's feasible. It, it's within you know, the area of where the, the houses and stuff would be, it's far enough away from the pond and far enough away from the creek. But then the the leech lines and stuff like that would actually have to go back the other way underneath the driveway. And I don't, that's what I don't know if that can happen. If, um, it because it would have to be like, more of a, a solid, a solid tube, solid line of where the driveway is going to be and then go out to the, the leech lines from there. So I don't, I don't know. You got, if anybody knows about that, you know, if, you know, the leech lines from a septic tank can go underneath the driveway, let me know. Uh, or at least the, the, the feeder, the feeder line to the leech lines. I, I, let's put it that way. It's the feeder line to the leash lines. If it can go underneath the driveway. I, I don't see why it can't. But I don't know. So. Um, which. Where, where I'm thinking everything should go. I haven't really. Um, told Glass about it yet. Because. If you go the other direction though. There's a lot of trees. A lot of trees, and I'm saying a lot of trees. So, um, trying to to dig and and get all that stuff over in that area would just be uh, a pain. But anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and and get back into the house. I'm pretty sure that this one's itching to get out of the truck because <laughs> we're. She's like, Dad, you were home and you're not letting me out. So, definitely appreciate y'all for following the journey. So. Yeah, RV pad, cabin, uh, base for mom and dad's, uh, the foundation for their cabin, getting our electric pole put in, getting the the water situated and fixed, and then finding the septic tank to be able to dump in it. Those are our five, our five things that we are focusing on the most right now. Um, yeah. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave you at that and uh, make sure you're having a great wedding day. Uh, hopefully we stay dry cause it's supposed to be scattered thunderstorms today. And just, uh, know that today is probably going to be a wash anyway, because Gladys has to go to an appointment. 
about a four hour drive, two hours there, two hours back. Not cool. So I'm here with the kiddo and, uh, yeah, I was planning to work on the Jeep today, but I can't do that if it's raining. Anyway, <laughs> y'all be good. Make sure you're thinking a veteran every chance you get, not only on Veterans Day. We'll see you on our next one. Bye-bye, y'all.